Okay, it's good to go. Well, in this video, I'd like to talk about the situation with the job positions uh, in tech industry, especially um, as far as it's related to software development, data engineering, machine learning stuff, data science, and all these stuff related to this. So the reason why I'm uh, going to talk about these things is that in the previous video, I talked about the situation I have at the moment is that, well, I'm waiting for a company to decide if I'm going to continue work for them or they going to just, you know, fire me as one of the other 10 people they're going to uh, lay off or fire, it depends. But yeah, so because of that reason, I've been in the past few days, I've been searching around the internet, especially on LinkedIn, to see what's the situation with the, all the positions. And to be honest, it doesn't look good at all because uh, two years ago, when I was around two years and a half, uh, like that less than three years ago that I started to apply for uh, all the positions as a software developer the situation was much better um, I was at, uh, at Tampere University for one year as a researcher developer and then when my contract had ended I started to uh, look for a job as a developer so I was looking for you know junior mid-level developer uh, three years ago because it was much easier to do that but these days when I'm looking at all the jobs most of the job positions you see are mainly senior positions which is not really good so if you have you know less than six years of experience it's not enough for them apparently to find a job and that's the problem at the moment so I'm looking for mainly for mid-level to senior jobs but well, even as a senior, what they want from you uh, to do for them, it's huge. So you need to, first of all, you need to uh, have a lot of experience on some main stacks like Next.js or Python or whatever. And then you need to have a ton of other, uh, uh, you know, you, you need to know a lot of other tools, how to work with them, all all kinds of technologies, databases, and I'm gonna talk about all of these things in more details in this video, but this is the general observation I have. And this is something that I've been hearing for the past few months that people are saying that there is no job for junior developers and there are a lot of firings and laying offs. And if you want, want to find a job, you need to be really good, you need to be senior, but um, didn't believe that, but now that I'm looking at the jobs, the whole Europe and uh, even US or Canada, the situation is pretty much the same. So, um, but the, the fact is that the, the, if the population is more, so the chances that you find some junior positions is more. But on the other side, you need to pay attention that they're all um, the, the percentage is similar, you know, there are a lot of applicants who are looking for the same junior positions. So if a country has more junior uh, uh, positions for developers, it doesn't mean that the opportunities are better there. It Well, you need to look the other side, the number of applicants. So I think it's the whole economy of the world and this is what happened, I think. Um, this, is, this scenario, this is what I think about that. Well, three years ago, three years ago, after uh, pandemic ended, after COVID, the situation was that all the companies again started to hire a lot of people. But over the past two years, they realized that the economy uh, wasn't really good. The, we were expecting to see economy has a good growth but um, but they didn't see that much profit for their company so they again started to laying off people and i think this is the situation at the moment and even with the war happened uh, between russia and ukraine the situation even got worse uh, in that respect so uh 
at the moment, that's a really tough situation. So let me talk about a little bit about the, all the job positions and everything I've seen so far is that so I, most of the job positions related to web development and basically software engineering, you can categorize it into three different categories. So the first, the very first category is web development. So web development is basically creating web applications, websites, or whatever related to, or even it's sometimes just RESTful APIs for the clients for mobile applications. But in web development, we have front end, back end. So if you know both, it's called full stack developer. And when it comes to web development, there are a lot of technologies these days, but based on what I've seen so far is that the very first technology that you can find a job really easily for that is uh, all the technologies around JavaScript. So Node.js, JavaScript, TypeScript, React.js, Next.js, and pretty much you need to know everything about all these things when you're applying for a job and you need to have pretty much all these technologies in your CV to get response from them. So as I told you, you need to be senior. So as a senior, you need to know, and it's not enough to know about them and you know how to work with them. Also, they expect you to have a track record, a good track record, and um, and actually uh, have a job experience. You need to list that I work in this company with uh, these projects and these projects where you're using, you know, uh, React.js, Next.js, and I did this, I did that. So, yeah, but the first, very first technology in web development is JavaScript. The other technologies, which is really great, and also you can d d draw a lot of demands for that in other areas like data science or machine learning is Python. So with Python, Django, Flask, FastAPI, all these frameworks around Python, there are a lot of job positions out there, but again, you need to be a senior developer with a lot of years of experience. And well, this is really huge for a person who only has two, three years of experience with Python, and he only worked in one company. Well, it's not really easy, but well, you need to try, you know? But these two technologies have um, more, I think, chance to for you to get uh, hired. And we have other languages, other stacks, other technologies. And well, let me tell you this, that uh, if you know uh, JavaScript or Python, it's not enough. If you know all the frameworks around it, it's not enough. Um, it's just the main stack. You also need to know about all the school and school databases. You need to know about uh, queuing, uh, about, you know, async tasks, technologies, um, well, all kinds of things. It depends on the company. And sometimes when you look at the title, it's not exactly web development. Sometimes you just want a data engineer. You need to know how to work with on-premises service uh, servers with Linux. Or, or actually cloud services like AWS, Google Cloud Platform, or Azure. So they want you to know all these things, but well, there's a main stack and a long list of uh, requirements. Anyway, there are other uh, languages like PHP, uh, which is not that much popular, but there are a lot of jobs out there. And usually you, you don't find the jobs on online uh, job websites like LinkedIn because most of the companies that use these kind of technologies like PHP, Drupal, Laravel, they're building websites for others. So it's serv servicing companies basically. And you just need to find these companies in your uh, country, go to their website, try to uh, send an uh, open application to them and that's it and wait for them to answer you. So JavaScript, Python, and PHP, I can say that um, are three best uh, languages for building websites. If you look at the chart for all the websites, you see, you notice that a huge percentage is still based on PHP. Okay, anyway, so this is the one basically, and also we have the front-end. Uh, so with all these technologies, 
uh, when you use PHP or Python. So basically front end these days are mostly React JS. And so you need to know in the end, you need to know Node.js, TypeScript, JavaScript. So sometimes they want all of these things, you know, you need to know Python, you need to know JavaScript. But this is my observation and this is the best path. If you want to be a developer, these two languages are the best languages to start with or continue with. Now in the second category, we have mobile and iOS Android applications. So the technologies, they're all a little bit different. The languages are a little bit different, even though you can create uh, cross-platform applications with uh, Node.js technology and some frameworks around it like React Native. However, they, they have their own native um, um, stacks, basically. So I'm not really an expert in mobile applications, but this is another observation. But I haven't seen that much. Well, as a full stack developer, they expect you to know how to build uh, mobile applications, but always they're looking for first for a web developer. Then, if you know how to build a web app, um, how to build um, a mobile application, it's also great. So the third category, which is not the, the number of jobs, are not that huge about that, but it's basically software engineering. So they want you just to know uh, a programming language. The programming could be different. It could be Java. It could be C++. Could be, um, uh, you know, whatever, anything. Uh, Python, JavaScript, anything. But mostly in this category, you 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 see some other um, unfamiliar languages, and they they want usually to build some desktop applications, some you know, some applications for a custom device they have, or they want you to program, a, you know, a microcontroller or something like that. But it's a big category and um, it's not really, really easy to apply for all of them because every job is different, every requirement is different. And so you need to uh, know what they want. But, well, a secure path, I think, is Python. JavaScript and all the frameworks around it and start learning other technologies as well. And it's a really bit tough situation at this point, but uh, I can say that this is my observation at this point. I'm not quite sure about it, but we'll see. But my observation is that um, software development uh, like old days is dead. So the future is gonna be more about building big structure, um, you know, applications or designing the structure, designing the infrastructure. As an architect, as a senior developer, you need to know, you need to see all the big picture, all the pieces that put it together to build a system. That's, um, that, that's the future, I believe. And, it has an overlap with data engineering. So data engineering basically is the same thing. You need to know how to work with different tools to gather data, to process the data, and to store the data and do all kinds of stuff. So we have a ton of technologies around this. So being an architect, being a data engineer is a good path, I think. And I work in those positions as well a little bit. So over the past seven, you know, six, seven years, I worked in different positions, trying to understand every piece. But my problem was that I didn't focus on one area and try to jump from one area to another. Some people say that it's not good, it's bad. Some people say, well, it's good, but it depends on the company that uh, is gonna hire you because when they look at your CV, uh, they wanna see what they want to see. So when somebody look at my CV, they see everything. Backend developer, data scientist, uh, data engineer. And it's, for some companies, it's good. For some companies, some companies, it's it's a bad thing. Anyway, I think the future is um, is is related. It's going to be about 
data engineering, data science, and machine learning. The, with all the technologies these days we see, like Gen, Gen AI or the AI in general, uh, ChatGPT, uh, and all the technologies, the demand for you know building and training uh, machine learning models um, is really low. But on the other hand, they want somebody to understand all these technologies and try to put them together. So uh, somehow it's called MLOps. So basically, you need to know all the API services around uh, machine learning, also all the technologies about databases, data warehousing, uh, processing, streaming. You need to know how to work with all of these things and then put them together to create a scalable system to handle a ton of data. A lot of these technologies are like, you know, for streaming, for instance, we have Kafka. Um, for processing, we have Spark or Databricks, which is the cloud version of that, pretty much. Uh, we have BigQuery for querying the big databases. It's from Google Cloud. We have uh, a lot of technologies, the long list of technologies, and some companies want at least 10 of these technologies you need to know how to work with them but i try to talk about these technologies more in other videos but if you just want to start i think the best path is just um, try to focus on the big picture and try to learn a, a, a bit from each piece and then put it together instead of just focusing on one single area or if you want to be a developer JavaScript and Python. But please let me know what you think about the job situation, about the future of web development, about the future of all the jobs in technology. But at this point, this is my observation. I hope you enjoyed this. See you. Bye bye.